This is Sound Experience, the show that explores the vast world of audio production through the experiences of our guests and the ears of your host, mixing engineer and producer Tim Dolbear. Welcome to Sound Experience, brought to you by Intertalk Radio, the voice of the music biz. Welcome to another edition. I am broadcasting to you from Eclectica Studios in beautiful Austin, Texas, after a very rainy month of May. We have now entered June, and it's beautiful. So, there you go. That's the weather report. Welcome. Thank you for listening to the weather here on Sound Experience. Before we get started, I wanted to give a shout out to some of the sponsors. We got Front End Audio. Dot com, your ultimate pro audio dealer, the Blackbird Academy, hands-on training for studio and live sound, and they are simply the school. If you want to learn and get to that next level and have job placement available that really works, this is the school. Great River Electronics, uh, Source Connect by Source Element, which allows me to connect in from my studio here in Austin, Texas, to the station in San Diego. And a whole bunch more things that are happening around here. It's just been a busy, crazy uh, couple weeks. So let me get on, to the, get on to a question that I had coming in from people all over the place. Uh, I have a new video that is on the Manly Force, and it is available. People were asking me about it. Yes, I have been doing some work for Manly uh, for various different video promotional and teaching things. And the Manly Force video is now available at timdolbear.com, or sorry, at youtube.com forward slash timdolbearonline. So youtube.com forward slash timdolbearonline. And the Manly Force video is all about it, why it's designed, how it's designed, how it's different, everything about it, the, uh, how it's different from their other preamps. And I mean, that's what I'm using. That's what I'm actually plugged into right now. My mic is actually plugged into my Manly Force. Uh, Because of the sound, it just sounds like a great, great console. So next, I wanted to share with you a a couple things of news. As many of you guys know, I was the product specialist for Sampletude and Sequoia for North America up until recently, um, up until just the last few days, in fact. And over the last six-plus years of being their product specialist, and obviously I still use Sequoia. I have not stepped away from that. I simply have just parted ways with doing that specific job at the company. And over the last six-plus years of doing that, plus 14 years or so of working with their beta team, uh, I became a whiz at the workflow and just love the workflow that's built into that program, the sound of it, all of the different features. So there's, I'm always being asked how to do certain processes. And one of the ones that I'm asked about so often... I created a how-to PDF on it. It's very in-depth with pictures and descriptions, and it's in English. It's not been translated from another language. So it's very easy to follow step-by-step, and it's all about exporting your masters into multiple formats quickly and correctly. It helps you deal with when you're working with many different uh, sample rates. So if you're mastering at high res, And then, of course, you're delivering it all the different sample rates that are that and below, as well as mastering for iTunes and and exporting into all the different formats that you need to do. A lot of people find it, in fact, most people find it tedious because you're having to do one thing for one format, another type of setup for another format, changing volumes and such. And therefore... It's, it becomes really tedious to try to remember how to do and what you need to do for each thing. Like, oh, I'm, I'm exporting it for MP3, but that will give me intersample distortion if I leave the volume set the same place I had it for CD quality and onward. So also, all of a sudden, your volume uh, peaks will jump up when you sample rate convert from, say, 96 down to 44.1. Suddenly, your brick wall kind of goes, is, your brick wall is knocked over because there's now stuff going over the limit that you had the brick wall set at because sample rate conversion happened after. It talks about using the program for sample rate conversion as well as using third-party sample rate converters such as uh, Seracon, which is what I use and highly recommend. Anyway, if you're interested in finding out more about this, email me at tim at timdolbear.com tim at timdolbear.com and i will send you information on it this pdf is available for sale and so far i have sold many many copies in fact most of the high-end top mastering engineers in north america and even a few in europe have purchased this from me and they use it every single day and have made it part of their workflow so there you go that definitely is something that uh 
I would love to share with you because so many people who have got it from me are so happy with with you know being able to use it and put it into every single day usage. So I am just entering in one more piece of information uh, that has just been sent to me. And give me one second. We seem to be having a technical issue, so I am I am on that. And you get to listen to me type on the air. Isn't that cool? How many other radio stations allow you to do that? We love it when you type. So. <laughs> awesome. It's always something. There's always something interesting when it's live, so that keeps it fun. And uh, it keeps me on my toes, too, because obviously working in a, a studio, right now what I would normally be doing is just rewinding it back and punching in. So since it's live, we'll just carry on and, and, uh, and see what happens with it. So... Uh, before we get going further, there's a couple other things that ha- people have been asking me about. They've been asking me also about the refurbing or rebuilding, reconstruction, cleaning, and soldering and everything for our Sony MCI JH110B, which we are rebuilding to put here into the studio as a two-track quarter-inch um, mixed down to deck. And there will be a new blog coming out in the next couple days. Uh, the last one came out about a week and a half ago, and you can always, of course, find my blog at, at obviously, entertalkradio forward slash sound experience. There's a link to my blog on there, as well as, uh, obviously, if you just do go to my site, timdolbear.com, you can find a link to my blog. There's lots of pictures. We had to do a lot of crazy things for this. We had to rebuild bracing. We had to uh, swap out 50-plus red IC sockets. Each socket has, you know... 8 or 14 uh, solder points that had to be cleared out, removed, and then a new solder or a solder and a new socket at that point, as well as all of the, um, and you'll see in the pictures, they go on forever, all of the little pins that are sticking up out of the motherboard for the Molex connectors to pop onto, all of those had to be resoldered and reseated. So it's a really entertaining read, and that's on my blog. So just check out timdolbear.com, click on blog, or go to Intertalk Radio forward slash sound experience and click on the blog link there, and that will get it to you. So we shall move on from here, and I want to bring on our guest. Now, this is a friend of mine that I've had for quite a many years now, and I am so happy to have him on the show today. So we're going to talk to him about really in-depth, really in-depth mastering workflows, the gear that goes into high-end mastering, and we're just going to see where it all leads. But he's he's not only probably the most known mastering engineer in the world, he's also a visiting professor at schools across the world. Uh, he's an author for Mastering Audio, the Art and Science. I think it's in about third edition by now. Um, so everyone knows him. They, if you don't know him by name, you probably have seen, if you work with Pro Audio, and if you're listening to the show, I'm guessing you do, You've probably seen K-metering or K-stereo. These are all different processes that he has come up with, too. So welcome to Sound Experience, Bob Katz. Hi, Tim. Boy, you're making my face go white. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Listen, I'd like to try uh, this external microphone in my iPhone so I don't have to hold this to my ear. So let's see if it it works. If it doesn't work, we'll know. First of all, I'll plug it in. Can you hear me? Absolutely. That's right. much better. Now I have to plug the earphone to him. Say again. That is much better. Very, very good. Okay. That's good. Now, I'm almost there. <laughs> there we go. Turn you up about 20 dB. Great. Say Great. something. All right. Good. Uh, now, check. Now One, we're, two. we're cooking with <laughs> gas. Uh, electric gas. <laughs> electric okay. gas. All right. So what have you been up to? Can you bring us up to date on, on your current going-ons? Oh, music, music, music. <laughs> yes. Uh, there's a progressive rock band called White Willow into their third album. And I just uh, mastered uh, this album and blew the mind of the uh, artist who said, how he, he's still trying to figure out how I managed to bring out all these interesting details in a mix that he already thought was fantastic. So I'm yes. really happy about that. Uh, another um, 
album that I'm really proud of is a singer from Canada named Jacqueline Giu, spelled G-U-I-L-L-O-U. Uh, she's got a voice, I would say, for the ages. Um, mm. She's only about, I, I would guess she's only about 25, and she looks fantastic, but her her voice is is timeless. And um, we have a string quartet on there, uh, electric bass, acoustic bass, uh, saxophone, piano, you name it. It's it's a beautiful album. I'm very happy about that, too. So that's just two things from the past couple of months. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, new books coming out? New anything that we should know about right at the top? Well, I'd like to publicize something that has nothing to do with me, per se, but which sure. would be great if your listeners would help out. Uh, I and two other, actually three other, a total of four uh, engineers and producers are behind an effort to get a petition to the streaming services so that they will loudness normalize their streaming. I'm talking about YouTube, Apple, yes, Apple Music, Prodigy, Tidal, and... Uh, Oh, we're coming up, uh, coming up on a break. Hold that thought, and we'll dive into that when we get back. Uh, okay. You've been listening to Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio, the voice of the music biz. I'm Tim, we're talking with Bob Katz. We'll be back in a minute. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. Have you ever wondered what it's like to record on a Grammy award-winning album? Have you ever wondered what it's like to play in front of a stadium crowd? Have you ever wondered what it's like to be on a world tour? I'm Jackie Bertoni, and I've played with the who's who in the music industry, and I've toured the world. Come join my world behind the velvet rope and get into the groove on Jackie's Groove. Live 2 p.m. Mondays and available 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release, and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Hey, it's Catherine from Listen Local Radio. Moe's Guitars has proudly served the San Diego music community since 1975. Specializing in guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, and ukuleles, they buy, sell, trade, and consign. If you're looking for lessons, repairs, accessories, and cool gear, you found the right place. Located in downtown La Mesa Village, stop by and check out their digs or visit moesguitars.com or their Facebook page. M-O-Z-E guitars.com. 619-698-1185. Hi, this is Rob Barnett, CEO and founder of VinVillage.com and the Wine and Dine Show on Vin Village Radio. Do you have a wine, event, product, or service to promote? Then contact VinVillage.com to reach thousands of wine lovers across the country. VinVillage connects like-minded wine enthusiasts with unique and exclusive wines, events, products, and services. To learn more, contact us on VinVillage.com. VinVillage is where wine lovers connect.
This is Sound Experience, the show that explores the vast world of audio production through the experiences of our guests and the ears of your host, mixing engineer and producer Tim Dolbear. Hey, welcome back to Sound Experience on Ender Talk Radio, your voice of the music biz. So we're on today with Bobcats. We were talking about a movement that you are getting behind. Uh, how can we get behind you in this movement and support the movement? Well, it's really how can you get behind the future of the music business. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with me, per se. Right. It has to do with the future. And uh, as we know, there's a has been for many, many years a uh, loudness war, which has accelerated tremendously, which uh, wow. I think is holding back the potential quality of the sound of our music. So if everybody within the sound of my voice could go to change.org slash P slash, well, just look up streaming. If, let, let me try going to change.org right now and search for yeah, because we can streams. we can put it on the website also. So if you're going, if you go to the show's site, or if you're there streaming it right now, uh, or later, uh, download or stream, which is always available, you'll actually see a link for it. We can put it on there. Yeah, I'm going to have to because I just did a search and it comes up with a lot of things under the word streaming. But basically, it's a petition to try and convince Apple, Title, Prodigy, um, you name it. Oh, YouTube included as well, to uh, regularize their levels so that quality music and quality sound will have a chance to play against the uh, over-compressed music without having uh, to over-compress themselves, to let the artists produce the music in the quality that they mixed not be distorted by the streaming service. I think that's a good thing. Absolutely. We have almost five yeah, we have almost 5,000 supporters and signatures already. It would be great to get it up to 7,000, 8, 9, 10,000 so that we can really uh, influence Apple, which has a history of uh, going on its own and not necessarily listening. It's kind of sad that Apple, which invented Soundcheck, which is a, a, a loudness normalizing uh, system, uh, th- themselves have not uh, have not normalized uh, Apple Music, which they bought from uh, Beats Radio, and who knows what happened there. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay, so okay, that, well, we... that's got nothing to do with me. It has to do <laughs> with the future of music. <laughs> yes, and I'd like but to that's important to all that. of us, because the majority of people, I imagine, uh, listening to the show and myself are obviously in audio production, and the majority are in mastering and interested in the whole mastering side of it. So it's very well, important. Well, if... if if you want to uh, predict how your uh, music will uh, sound when it gets put out on the streamers, it's the wild, wild west out there. Every streaming service has a different level, and uh, many cases the levels that they've picked are so high that it's guaranteed to be clipped or peak limited or compressed in order to fit into that smaller dynamic range. And we'd like to uh, see that changed. Great, great. Okay, okay. So let's dive into you then. Uh, I guess let's start with just your current setup and your current type of workflow, and then we'll we'll move from there. Okay. Well, the first thing is that there are no uh, standards. It's what feels and sounds right. Now that mm. sounds like a cop out, but uh, no. I've been using my ears for years, and what sounds right uh, if, you, if you're successful and if the artists that uh, you're working with like what you do, then let's go on. But I'm a big fan of uh, dy- uh, having preserving or enhancing dynamic range if possible. Uh, I think there's uh, too much squashed material out there, and you'd be surprised how many artists that I work with, if I help to enhance the dynamics, if their mixes were a little bit too uh, too squashed, a little bit too small, if I can help to make those mixes sound bigger. So let's talk about some of the things that could help to make the mixes sound bigger. And, you know, it, 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 there's a plethora of analog gear and digital stuff as well. 
uh, in my chain. So you want to know about the workflow? Uh, well, obviously it starts in a DAW, and mm-hmm. um, I bet you you know what DAW I'm using, Tim. I th- you know think it. you're using Sequoia. You've been right, on Sequoia exactly. for as long as I have, at least. Maybe longer. I don't know. Is yeah. this about version 8? Version 8? Yeah, I, I when, bought when, version 8. There you go. 2000, so, 2002. Right. I mean, there's a lot of things that are issues with Sequoia, but there are a lot of things that keep me with it. And uh, one of them is a feature called object-based uh, processing. Now, um, I could ask for a show of hands out there. Everybody raise your hand if you're familiar with Pro Tools Clip Game. There you go. Okay. Thousands of people out there just raised your hands. But what if I told you that uh, Sequoia and Samplitude, its a younger cousin or a younger, uh, uh, smaller featured uh, relative, have been using Clip Game uh, longer by far and, and uh, doing it quite successfully. But it's far yeah. more than just click, click game. Uh, what object-based processing is click game on steroids, folks. Uh, it allows me to put any number of plugins or processes on an object, cut up the object, do a crossfade of any length or shape to the next object, and crossfade or instantly change from one EQ to another, much, much, much faster than uh, rubber banding or dragging the dots up and down like you do in Pro Tools or many of the other competing DAWs. Uh, Tim, to your knowledge, does any other DAW besides Samplitude or Sequoia have object-based processing? There's a, there's a couple that are coming along with it. Um, Reaper has done it a little bit. Uh, it's not nearly to the extent, again, that Sampletude is, which Sampletude is the music production version, Sequoia is a post-production. And um, I've, I've heard rumors that Pyramix might be adding it. Um, the hard part is, is when you have a, a software DAW created, in order to go back and add essentially an entire mixer that works non-destructive on a single clip or object, you have to really rewrite the software and an audio engine to be able to do that. So that's why so many people have had trouble adding that in after the fact. It's like if you had all of your uh, audio real-time or audio suite, real-time audio suite plugins for Pro Tools, if all of that was non-destructive, you never have to render, and they just sat on the clip and just lived there. So it it's phenomenal for everything that I do. And obviously in, in uh, mastering, it you never end up opening the actual mixer window. For the most part, you're just sitting on the objects and using the mixers that are on the objects to do all of your mastering, adding all of your effects and plugins and stuff, and they all run in real time, non-destructive, and that way you're able to master it off uh, in a sequence the way an album looks and sounds and should be. Is well, that kind of a good way to explain uh, it? <laughs> Let's take it out of the abstract. Uh, yes. For example, if you were mixing... And you had, uh, if you were mastering and you have two tracks, uh, two stems, uh, vocal and instrumental, uh, because uh, maybe the artist or the producer didn't quite get the vocal levels uh, as well as they should be. And mm-hmm. if you're, uh, you know, it helps to have been an experienced mixing engineer before you uh, get into stems and mastering. There are mastering engineers who wouldn't even dare work with stems because they have never mixed, and that's fine. But uh, I, I, I have uh, been a mixing engineer, and uh, I find that if a client uh, has an issue with the mix, I'm not shy to recommend uh, stems. So let's say that you have a vocal stem and an instrumental stem, and you have to ride the vocal. Uh, it is so quick to do that with object-based editing that, it's uh, faster than I could even finish this sentence. You make a cut, you assign a, uh, a clip gain to that uh, vocal segment, and you're done. Now, of course, now that can be done in Pro Tools, so you say, oh, well, we can do that now, too. But that used to be very difficult, uh, much more difficult in Pro Tools to do that smoothly and, uh, and uh, imperceptibly. But you can also do far more. You could have... Uh, if, if there's a difficult segment where 
the cl- uh, you don't have stems and the client says, I need to be able to hear the vocal more clearly on this word, uh, what are you going to do? Well, uh, in Sequoia, you would make a cut in front of and after that vocal piece, and uh, uh, in Pro Tools, that cut, you'd have to expand it to make a little crossfade so you don't get a click there, but in Sequoia, you can have a default crossfade that you always get uh, when you get that. So I have a two millisecond um, root cosine crossfade as a standard default when I make that cut. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, if I'm trying to get the vocal to come through more clearly, I might assign an MS equalizer to th- just that small section to bring the vocal level up so that it doesn't deteriorate the sound of the whole piece uh, as much. Uh, because exactly. when you bring up the, the center channel, uh, you're going to narrow the uh, stereo image. Uh, exactly. So, but you might, uh, if it's just a vocal, you might bring up the 200 hertz to 600 hertz range very slightly. Uh, and if you only have to raise it about a dB, uh, and you do this with an MS equalizer so that the, only the M channel and only between 200 hertz and 600 hertz is being raised, uh, you, by raising the M channel, you can... Is, is that a break? That's a break coming on. So okay. I guess hold that thought. <laughs> we'll be right back with it. 12 minutes goes by really quickly. You're listening to Sound Experience. We're talking with Bob Castle. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Hey, it's Catherine from Listen Local Radio. Moe's Guitars has proudly served the San Diego music community since 1975. Specializing in guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, and ukuleles, they buy, sell, trade, and consign. If you're looking for lessons, repairs, accessories, and cool gear, you found the right place. Located in downtown La Mesa Village, stop by and check out their digs or visit moesguitars.com or their Facebook page. M-O-Z-E guitars.com. 619-698-1185. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing, and it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. Have you ever wondered what it's like to record on a Grammy award-winning album? Have you ever wondered what it's like to play in front of a stadium crowd? Have you ever wondered what it's like to be on a world tour? I'm Jackie Bertoni, and I've played with the who's who in the music industry, and I've toured the world. Come join my world behind the velvet rope and get into the groove on Jackie's Groove. Live 2 p.m. Mondays and available 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Has your business been appified? Are you tired of doing marketing that doesn't deliver results? Mobile apps build loyalty and quality retention. Your app from UPG Mobile puts your business on their mind and at their fingertips. UPG Mobile will give you a custom app highlighting how you are unique, targeting your message, and improving your open rates. Appify your business and amplify your presence with your customers at upgmobilemarketinggroup.com.
This is Sound Experience, the show that explores the vast world of audio production through the experiences of our guests and the ears of your host, mixing engineer and producer Tim Dolbert. Hey, welcome back to Sound Experience. We're talking with Bob Katz. Let's get back into Pitbull what we were audio. talking about. Pitbull Audio, who let the dogs out? Okay, so <laughs> uh, anyway, we were just talking about object-based processing. And Correct. So just for that small segment, we might have to cheat up the M channel, which could screw up the stereo image. But, mm-hmm. and I'll put in a plug for one of my processors, uh, if the stereo image gets a little bit narrow at just that moment, uh, and you uh, want to compensate for it, you could try the K-Stereo processor, which uh, I invented and is available from UAD. Um, and so you could use the K-Stereo in conjunction with that MSEQ just for that small piece of that object if, and perhaps not notice any change in or loss in ambience if you're really good at it and cross-fade exactly. in and out of it. Another exactly. um, possible uh, use of many, many uses, of course, for object-based editing. Uh, let's say that uh, recording is a little bit noisy, but you can tolerate it during the loud passages, but you can't during the soft passages. You start to hear the hiss. You could crossfade to a, a very simple uh, EQ that might soften the, the 3 kilohertz to 5 kilohertz range just during that section so that you're not going to apply the EQ across the entire song. Or if you have uh, a fade uh, or the ending of a song that, that gets very quiet and you're starting to hear the hiss again, you can crossfade with a long uh, linear crossfade to uh, high-frequency roll-off, which with luck, there aren't any high-frequency instruments during that uh, ending section or the decay, and uh, you can uh, delicately get, get rid of the hiss without hurting the rest of the song. So uh, I consider... If it wasn't for object-based processing, I probably would not continue to be using Sequoia, but it's, it's, uh, it's habit-forming. <laughs> it, oh, okay, I so can't live without it. Me too. There you go, guys. Yep. So uh, that's the first part of my workflow is to, uh, to get the songs in line. But then I, uh, for, I would say that for about 90% of the recordings that I work with, the pop recordings that I work with, I will go out to the analog domain to external processors, and that's what we'll talk about next. But uh, if a recording needs a transparent approach, I'll use transparent approach, which might be uh, totally in the digital domain, totally in the box. I'm not afraid to do that at all. Uh, But uh, if a recording would benefit from one of the outboard analog processors, let's do it. Now, I'll use an uh, extremely high-quality D to A converter and A to D converter to uh, process, uh, to get the signal out to the analog domain. Uh, is it okay to mention the brand name? Oh, absolutely. Please do. Okay. So I'm using a Prism Lyra 2, and mm-hmm. I think that's one of the closest to transparent converters that I've ever found. And uh, every recording that I get, I upsample to 96 kilohertz, which I find uh, improves the performance of the analog processors and maybe the D-to-A converter. Maybe it's just my imagination. We can't necessarily justify that, but I believe that it helps. It it certainly seems to improve the the headroom. Yes, uh, and any plugins that you have to be using, any plugins such as EQs or anything that don't already upsample, it absolutely helps. Absolutely. There, Tim agrees with me. So, yeah. uh, and it couldn't hurt, guys. It, it can't hurt. It's not like we're trying to manufacture frequencies that aren't there. It has to do with the linearity of the converters and their performance. Uh, clipping, uh, if it occurs, is a lot less audible at the higher sample rates. We could go on and on, but let's just say that I found enough evidence, at least to my ears, to do that. So I'll up sample to 96K using a product from... Uh, Weiss, Daniel Weiss, W-E-I-S-S, and he has a software sample rate converter that is considered by many mastering engineers to be the best in the world called Saracon, S-A-R-A-C. 
S-C-O-N. And so I'll use Seracon to upsample to 96K, and then later on I'll use Seracon to downsample back down to 44.1 at the end of the uh, process. So it goes out to the analog gear, and that's where we have all the fun of working. If the recording is um, has too much digititis, <laughs> a word that I think I made up a long time ago, uh, sounds a little bit too harsh, then uh, I'll look for some of the warmer processors in my analog chain. If recording needs a more transparent approach, then I'll use some of the more transparent processors. So which ones do you want to talk about uh, first? Any uh, of them. The, okay. Anything How about that's the, fun. Well, I think one of the most fun pieces is uh, to put it through tubes. When mm -hmm. it needs tubes, uh, now there are good tubes and there are bad tubes. And mm -hmm. a good tube um, processor um, will use high-quality regulation on the cathodes and the, the plates, use as few tubes as necessary in the chain and not try to multiply that so that the losses, uh, if, there, if you consider them to be losses of the tubes, are not that great. Um, and one of them, one of these processors I use uh, when, it, when the recording calls for it is the Pendulum ES8. Uh, it's a, um, now the, uh, uh, I understand that the term very new was uh, trademarked by Manly, but it's kind of hard. We could say variable mu, and it certainly wouldn't be the trademark. So let's say that the pendulum is a variable mu uh, compressor. Now, what's cool is that Greg Gualtieri, the uh, developer of the pendulum products, discovered a new tube. Uh, not, no tube, of course, is new anymore. I, 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 there may right. be a few tubes that a, are still made. There's an off-the-beaten-path tube. Uh, this one is an off-beaten off path tube, but yes. he discovered it, and it uh, it's still fairly uh, common, and it has exactly the same characteristics as the original variable, very new tube that um, costs a fortune nowadays. So that was a great discovery because uh, variable new uh, compressors have a unique attack and release time. And they can be made to sound very creamy, if you like that creamy quality, and it's hard to get that in a plug-in or in any kind of uh, digital processor that I've discovered. There are some that come close, but I don't think that, uh, that you can quite match that. Plus, he's got input transformers that seem to fatten the sound. The tubes add a little bit of uh, fatness and distortion, but not too much, so it's not untransparent. And I use it even for some of my, my more transparent rock and pop work, uh, if that isn't a contradiction in terms. Can rock be <laughs> transparent? Well, let's just, let's just say we don't, we don't take it, we don't fuzz it up. This is not yes. a fuzzy box, but it does uh, soften the transients uh, in a very uh, delicate way. It fattens the sound with the transformers, and it, it, uh, it seems to give almost infinite bottom, which is kind of cool. And so I'll use that uh, to transform... Uh, a recording that's uh, a little bit too ha harsh sounding, even uh, possibly without using any compression at all. Now, uh, Tim, do you know what peak to loudness ratio means, PLR? Uh, explain it for everyone listening. Okay. We all know about the new loudness meters that conform to uh, R128 or BS1770. So mm -hmm. if you measure the program loudness, of a recording for the length of the program, that's called program loudness or integrated loudness. If it, you also measure the true peak level of that, of that program, the ratio or the difference between the peak level and the loudness level represents a kind of measure of how your transients are performing in the recording. Uh, yeah, we don't allow transients on this radio program, do we? Uh, but <laughs> oh. certainly, <laughs> oh yeah. But anyway, um, the pendulum, without any compression at all, uh, reduces the peak to loudness ratio of my material by two dB. Hmm. 
in a transparent way without doing any uh, t- without any attack time or release time. It just softens the transient, uh, and that makes it uh, very desirable for if you're trying to get the loudness up without hurting the sound. Uh, now, sometimes 2 dB can be really damaging, but uh, if you're trying to uh, fatten up a recording, uh, the uh, reducing the peak to loudness ratio with these transformers and tubes is the bee's knees. So the pendulum Absolutely. could be be a great little box to use. Now we've had we've had the, many different. Uh, We've had many different people on the show that have talked about the use of transformers in order to get different colorations, change the transients, and to really just give the vibe that they're looking for. And we've even had had a few engineers that have talked about having large collections of transformers of different sounds, of different vintage, of different brands, uh, simply to add the different mojo or vibe or feel because we're really, I mean, we're going for a feel in our music. We're trying to create and bring across a feeling in the sound. And transformers as well as tubes are a great way to go to do that. We have about 20 seconds left in this segment, but yes or no on that? <laughs> oh, totally. And I have, a, I have a couple of outboard transformers with XLR connectors that I sometimes oh, use for that purpose. That's cool. Yeah. Straight in, straight okay. out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, and after, well, the, after the break, we're going to talk about how to get depth without using the K stereo. Perfect. Perfect. All right. We'll be right back for the last segment of uh, Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. I am Tim Dolber. We're talking with Bobcats. We'll be back in a minute. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Have you ever wondered what it's like to record on a Grammy award-winning album? Have you ever wondered what it's like to play in front of a stadium crowd? Have you ever wondered what it's like to be on a world tour? I'm Jackie Bertoni, and I've played with the who's who in the music industry, and I've toured the world. Come join my world behind the velvet rope and get into the groove on Jackie's Groove. Live 2 p.m. Mondays and available 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. Has your business been appified? Are you tired of doing marketing that doesn't deliver results? Mobile apps build loyalty and quality retention. Your app from UPG Mobile puts your business on their mind and at their fingertips. UPG Mobile will give you a custom app highlighting how you are unique, targeting your message, and improving your open rates. Appify your business and amplify your presence with your customers at upgmobilemarketinggroup.com. Hey, it's Catherine from Listen Local Radio. Moe's Guitars has proudly served the San Diego music community since 1975. Specializing in guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, and ukuleles, they buy, sell, trade, and consign. If you're looking for lessons, repairs, accessories, and cool gear, you found the right place. Located in downtown La Mesa Village, stop by and check out their digs or visit moesguitars.com or their Facebook page. M-O-Z-E guitars.com, 619-698-1185. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear.
This is Sound Experience, the show that explores the vast world of audio production through the experiences of our guest and the ears of your host, mixing engineer and producer Tim Dolbear. Hey, welcome back to Sound Experience. We are talking with Bob Katz today, and we are talking about various different workflows. So let's dive back into that. Hey, it's going so fast. I'm looking at my list of things I wanted to cover. I won't even get close to them. So you'll have to invite well, me back. I'll have you on as many times as you want to be here. We're here every Monday. And, uh, I, you know, me and you sit and talk on the phone or in person for hours on end anyway. So I, I just love it. It's so anytime you want to be here. Anytime. Okay. Well, you'll have to turn me on to get me on. Okay, here we go. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, what does that in, mean? In the, I have no idea. I have no idea. But uh, we can only do this in person. But seriously. Yeah, right. um, okay. The, uh, there are, I, I would say that the master of distortion is, or at least one of the masters of distortion, is Dave Hill. Uh, and mm. Dave discovered, he may be the first to put this on record, that a certain percentage of usually second harmonic and very rarely third harmonic actually enhances the depth of a recording, and it can be done extremely transparently. So uh, one of the devices which he has put that process in, of course, is the uh, crane song head. But another uh, little-known a relatively little-known device is the Crane Song Tracker. It's mm. a compressor with emulations for uh, DCA, uh, classic FET compression, and one of the settings uh, that he has is called Vintage, and it and he's worked very hard to uh, using uh, possibly using transformers and possibly using some um, uh, basic analog circuits, transistors, to add a uh, calibrated amount of second harmonic distortion to the recording. I swear, when I listen through the tracker, I can't tell what whether anything is changing as far as the tonality. It doesn't change the tonality at all. Maybe it makes it a little bit warmer, but the uh, recording gains an additional three-dimensionality, uh, mm. all done in the analog domain without any artifacts. So uh, I would recommend looking at the trackers if you want uh, to gain additional depth in the analog domain. Uh, recommend looking at uh, my case stereo processor if you want to get additional depth in the digital domain. And they both work by different techniques and methods, and they both sound very different. So... Yes. Um, and each of the processors that I have is either in my in my mastering chain is either neutral to the depth or adds depth. Hopefully, it doesn't take any depth away. Although there is a very very subtle loss going from D to A to A to D. Uh, hopefully, the processors that I put in between that uh, make up enough for the loss so that uh, the, uh, the 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 subjective improvement outweighs the objective uh, degradation. That's part of the Absolutely. art of mastering anyway, is, yes. uh, is to make sure that the subjective improvement does not uh, uh, outweighs the objective degradation. And I would have to give Bob Olson, one of the great mastering engineers, credit for that uh, particular phrase. Uh, mastering is the art of uh, mastering objective improvement versus objective a subjective improvement versus objective degradation so mm. one of the devices in my chain that, that I like a lot is something that I I, I discovered myself uh, it's a box from a company in Poland called the better maker equalizer have you heard of it <laughs> no I, ha I don't think I have what a cool so name. you have to, you'll have to look it up it's a crazy okay. company. Their logo has a kind of a devil's tail uh, on it, and these guys are crazy. But what they have managed to do is to make a transparent analog equalizer that has uh, memories 
so that you can recall the memories by um, program changes, MIDI program changes, right. yet process in the analog domain. So it's Great. a digitally, digitally controlled analog equalizer, and it's as a, extremely transparent, does not hurt the depth in any way. He's got a great Poltec I have emulation in there, uh, and uh, I'm really fond of uh, some of the things that the Poltec can do. One of them is a real, real fat bass boost, and the other one is a uh, wonderfully, uh, if you want, sizzling or just airy high-end with a unique curve that you can only find in a Poltec. And he's got that. He's, he, he put... Um, they put a, a, and designed their own uh, inductor to emulate the Poltec circuit, but because okay. it's done with solid state, it doesn't have the, the fuzziness of some of the old tube Poltecs, yet it doesn't have any of the um, harshness of some of the digital Poltecs that you'll find in the uh, in plugins. So I highly recommend the Betamaker uh, for Fantastic. DQ. Yeah. Another box. Yeah. yeah. I'm so surprised there has not been more hardware pieces developed, and this is for the manufacturers out there, that don't take advantage of having digitally controlled analog. The first console I worked at was at Goodnight LA was the Trident Diane console, digitally controlled analog console. They made like three of them. And that was in the mid 80s mid and early 80s so if they could do it then we certainly can do it now i wish people would take more time to do that and build that in where we can have recall that then could be saved with the project that we're working on it's ridiculous that we can't it's ridiculous that in this day and age i have to bring up my sheet that i've created with bitmap in windows and draw lines of where the (laughs) or uh, take photos right exactly and photos don't work because like the knobs on my great river eq are in two different, uh, you know, the camera, in order to get it close enough, you have the angle of the knob sticking up. You can't tell exactly then where it's pointing. So I end up having to draw right. it. It's a lot easier on my Mastering Edition very move just because it has, you know, d and clicks for it, which is nice. Well, let me tell but, you how we get around that. First of all, the, the Better Maker is transparent. I was very uh, skeptical that a mm-hmm. digitally controlled analog product wouldn't have some kind of fuzziness or, or a lot, lack of quality, but it can be done well, and the guys at Better Maker prove that. But yes. uh, very, very few products, as you say, have done that. Now, a lot of my analog gear has detents. Uh, mm-hmm. My Mazalek MLA-4, which we'll talk about uh, next, next if we time. have a moment. Uh, <laughs> We're down has, to a minute. <laughs> uh, has detents. Uh, but the way I do it with the API 2500, which I really like for hard mm-hmm. rock, is I'll mm-hmm. send a test tone out of Sequoia through the API, and I can absolutely accurately reset the threshold and the output gain uh, mm-hmm. using the test tone. So that's how I, I do it. I, I, there's no way you can do that with a photograph or even with a, with a cheat sheet. You have to exactly. do it with a test tone. That's a good idea. I'm going to start messing with that idea, too. Uh, with the EQ, well, I'm getting close enough where it's, it's good enough for me, in my opinion. I'm, I'm not hearing a, an issue but it would be nice to nail it a little bit better yet. Call, call me up uh, as soon as we get off the line, and I'll, I'll talk about it with you. Oh, uh, you want to talk about uh, it on the air? Uh, <laughs> you, you, no, you only have an, a, a, a minute left, you said. Yeah, but I'll bring, i got to bring you back on because there's so many people who have so sure. many questions. I have a pages of questions of people who want to ask. So we're, uh, let me just thank you. thank you at this point. Thank you so much for being on the program, and please come back again. And uh, I ask everybody, if, you, if you're if you not familiar with his work, please look up Bobcats online. Uh, and, again, reach out to me with questions. Uh, again, I throw out there, I have the tutorial available for exporting masters into multiple formats quickly and correctly for Sample Tune Sequoia. So hit me up at timdolbear.com if you're interested in that. And beyond that, I'm signing off from Eclectica Studios. Thank you again to Bob. And now, go make some music.
Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. Which sandwich is healthy and tasty? Which sandwich can come on bread or in a bowl? Which sandwich comes 51 different ways so it's always your way? A which which sandwich? Stop into our shop in Hazard Center. We're upstairs from the Hazard Center Digiplex. Bring in your movie ticket. We will add a free drink and chips to your sandwich order. Or order online at whichwhich.com and we will have it ready and waiting. W-H-I-C-H-W-I-C-H. Whichwhich.com. Have you ever wondered what it's like to record on a Grammy award-winning album? Have you ever wondered what it's like to play in front of a stadium crowd? Have you ever wondered what it's like to be on a world tour? I'm Jackie Bertoni, and I've played with the who's who in the music industry, and I've toured the world. Come join my world behind the velvet rope and get into the groove on Jackie's Groove. Live 2 p.m. Mondays and available 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Hey, it's Catherine from Listen Local Radio. Moe's Guitars has proudly served the San Diego music community since 1975. Specializing in guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, and ukuleles, they buy, sell, trade, and consign. If you're looking for lessons, repairs, accessories, and cool gear, you found the right place. Located in downtown La Mesa Village, stop by and check out their digs or visit moesguitars.com or their Facebook page. M-O-Z-E-Guitars.com. 619-698-1185. 